As we get before the sermon this morning, uh, if you guys do have your Bibles, hopefully the, the slide is up there, uh, go ahead and read with me as each morning we're reminded that this church isn't just about me or whoever's up here preaching, but it's about the Word. And that no matter who's preaching or who's teaching, that it needs to be in accordance with God's Word. That you as the congregation are entrusted and charged in checking the scriptures and seeing if the things that are said are so. With that, let's go ahead and read together if you can read it. Now the Jews were more noble than those of Thessalonica, that they received the word with all eagerness, examining the scriptures daily to see if these things were so. You have been duly charged this morning. With that, uh, we have a guest speaker this morning, uh, our own Robert Carter. We're going to have him come up. I've known Robert about 12 years now. I'm and, sorry. Yeah. Oh, sorry. You see how you're loved, Rob? See how you're loved? Yes, I do. <laughs> but I don't want to give the, the, the story away, but it was, it's was it been an amazing journey to see where he has come from and where he is today. Uh, I'm very proud and humbled and honored to have been a part of that journey. And, you know, it, my, my best buddy right here. Uh, we've been through thick and thin together. I've been through all types of situations. And no matter what, is just seeing him grow in the Lord and see his faith and trust grow by leaps and bounds as he studies the Word. With that, it's all you, Rob. Uh oh, okay. Okay. All right. Well, good morning, everybody. And thank you for being here. Good morning. Good morning. Before I get into the Word this morning, I would like to give you. I would like to let you know that the Lord does work in you people. Daily. I'd like to give you a little bit of testimony if I can keep it together here. The Lord does miracles daily. We don't see them, but it does happen. And He will work in each and every one of you, and my testimony will prove it to you. And with the scriptures, it's going to be tough. When I was younger, I don't want to go too far back. I was <laughs> <laughs> we'll be here all night. When I was in my teens, I, I started messing with, with drugs, marijuana. Okay? Then I quit high school. But I got a good job at a Ford dealership in, our, in my town. I, I live in down in, Cal I live in down California. Great job. I loved it. I was good with my hands. It was easy for me. Loved it. I thought, yeah, I got it made. After a few years there, and you know, things are going great. Got me an apartment, got a nice car, a nice fast car. Yeah. And, uh, then I got introduced to cocaine. I thought that was the greatest thing ever. I could do cocaine, I could drink all night, I could stay up all night. And, you know, who made this stuff? It's great. Well, guess what? There's a price for it. Not only did the cocaine interfere with my life, it ruined my life for the next 25 years because it doesn't stay with that. It progresses. I was smoking weed. I was doing cocaine. Then it moves up to crystal meth. That is something you guys do not want to try. Please, don't do it. It will kill you. Physically, mentally, and it would take everything from you. Everything. I lost my jobs. I mean, I had a maid. I even got a job working for a race team from Ford Motor Company. I was on the circuit. I was in magazines. I was doing TV, radio. I had it going on. But my addiction was so strong. I love that dope so much because it just gets a hold of you and all you want is the drug. And it doesn't end there. You'll lose your job. And guess what happens next? You will do anything for that dope. Anything. I stole from family, from friends. Anybody, if I needed that dope, I didn't care. I had to go get that money so I could buy that dope. That's all that mattered in my life was that dope. You know? Then I lost my family. I lost my kids. I lost my dad for years. I had nothing. 
I was homeless. Ten years, I lived on the streets. That's when I met Pastor Chris. You know, I was living in between a church. You know, but I was sucked up. I just, you know, I didn't care. I didn't know. I mean, I knew there was a God, but I didn't care because the dope had such a strong hold on me. It changes your mind. People don't realize it. You know, it's not an addiction. It's a choice. Don't let people fool you. Don't do it. You know, once you do, it's got you. You know, the devil's strong. He'll use anything in your path to grab a hold of you. You know, because then what comes along with that? Pornography. You know, and then you got stealing. I mean, it just goes on. The list goes on and on. I mean, look at the evil in this world today. What do you think that comes from? The evilness, the devil, and his little dominions out there. And he knows he's got each and every one of your names. And he's got his little book, and he pulls it out, and he goes, all right, I'm going to mess with this guy today. And he comes, he talks in your ear. He'll throw stuff in your face, and he'll yank your chain. Don't make you do it. But you don't have to do it. You have a choice. You know, if you're grounded in the Lord, you won't do that choice, hopefully. Hopefully. You know? I hope that me sharing a little bit of my life can save one person. I mean, what I went through, I wouldn't want nobody to go through. I mean, you see me now, I'm a blessed person. I am so blessed. I've got my health. I've got teeth. These ain't real. <laughs> Smoking all that dope. It took my health, took my teeth. I was a mess. I was down to 110 pounds, sucked up. I mean, I couldn't even get a job. I walked through my town, everybody poke at me. Look, there's that guy, there's that guy. You know, he's a drug addict, you know? And nobody wants to deal with you, you know? But the way the people in, deal with it nowadays, oh, he needs a program. Let's stick in their program. That was like jail to me. And then talk about jail. You know how many times I've been in our jail? It was like a revolving door. Five? No, more than that. I mean, that was like every other month. But it goes from a couple days to a month, and then it goes more. Jail is not, a, you know, some place that makes you a new person. It's a training program to do more bad stuff. It's sad that it's that way. And there's people out here that can tell you that. It's a connection to get more information, how to do more evil, and to get more connections. It's sad that it's that way. There are a few that are, you know, who can get through it, and you know, I'm thankful that they can. But for the most part, it's a revolving door. Like I said, I have a loving God who has spared me, and I listen to him. Amen. You know, I was on the streets 10 years, going from you know, house to car to the side of a building. You know, I was nobody reckoned to be with. I was a loser, I was nothing. I didn't care about nothing. All I wanted was drugs, and that's it. You know, I didn't even eat. You know, and then what I did get, I either stole it from a grocery store, stole it from somebody's house, you know, or somebody would bring it to me. You know, because all you want is dope, 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 dope. That stuff is so wicked. But, you know, but then, you know, I, I got to be a little older, and, I started seeing how scandalous people were. My so-called friends and my, you know, that I hung out with. You know, I get a job and what happens? All right, payday, let's go get high. Well, they do all my dope. Well, that really pissed me off. <laughs> That's my dope, you know? Well, so then you start going by, staying by yourself. You find a little hiding spot somewhere in the town that you can do your little dope at. Well, the problem is the town sees it, you know, but you don't realize it because you're so messed up. You'll do it right there in front of everybody, but you don't realize it. I mean, the stuff that you'll do, you know, I'm glad that a lot of it I don't remember because it scares me what I really did. I hurt so many people out there, and I can't tell them sorry because I don't know who they are. The very few that I do know, I tell them sorry. It wasn't me. It was the other guy. But I do want to tell you how I got out of it. Somebody gave me 
This book. This book. It's just a book. But it's not. You know what this is? This is the living word of God. It's alive. You know? I'm sorry, but <laughs> this thing means a lot to me. It saved my life. No drug program. You know? I hung out at church because for some reason I knew church was safe. I don't know why, but I knew that no matter how deep I got into my drug addiction, I could go hang out at church. I could sleep on the stairs. I could break into the building and sleep inside. It was safe. Yeah, I got caught sleeping inside the church, but you know what happened when they caught me? Well, if you're going to live here, you got to go to church. What? I didn't expect that. So I did. I went to church. You know, I, I didn't understand it because I still had the mind of the world. You know, all I wanted was the free meal, you know, and then maybe a shower. It took time to work on me, to tear me down, to take that worldly tape out of my head and put in the Jesus tape because I was programmed of the world out there, not of God's word. Once you put this in here and most in here, wow life starts. Life starts over again. You know, the first 40 years, I did it my way. I'm hoping the next 40 plus years, yeah, I'm saying plus years, <laughs> that I can do it for him. You know, my dad used to tell me when, I, when he used to come visit me every once in a while when we got together because I wasn't a person you wanted to be around. I didn't want nothing to do with him. I didn't want to do with anybody. All I wanted was dope and hang out with my dope friends. He would tell me about this guy, the name Smuggler, who wrote a Harley and told people about God. And I'm like, what? I'm like, no way. I go, I'll never have that. You know, I can't even find my kids. You know? And then living at the time, I was living in the side of a church for about five years when I met Chris and Christy, you know, it changed my life. You know, I was working in the cafe because that's where the food was at. You know? <laughs> I'm being honest with you. That's where the food was at. Yeah. I didn't care about nothing else. Yeah. But they allowed me to come into the church, clean up in the morning in the, bath in the bathrooms, and then go work in the cafe. That was great. You know, I didn't like that. You know, people were starting to see that there was another side of me. You know, I wasn't just a loser drug addict. Yeah, I was probably high, granted, but I was changing. I was getting to know people instead of the people I grew up with and raised with. And it started to change my life. Little by little, this actually, I understood it. Because when I first started reading it, didn't want nothing to do with it. I can't understand that. And I, I literally argued with God. I can't understand this, but that doesn't work because if you ask him, he'll show you. And he did. Scared the hell out of me. Because once I understood this book, I couldn't go back. Because then I knew what I was doing was wrong. It was wrong. I couldn't go back. So I had to change, but I didn't know how. Everybody just wanted to shove me into a program. I couldn't do that because jail, I didn't like too much. I did it good because I was so used to being on my own, jail didn't bother me. I mean, I'd go in and do a couple months, a couple months, then a year. Well, you know, that gets old after a while. I didn't want that lifestyle. You see the guys in there, all they're doing is just talking to their family on the phone. Oh, that's it. You know, maybe they come and visit once in a while but their life's in prison. I don't want that life. Or they're dead. Out of the group that I hung with, there's three of us left. All the other ones are dead. One of them has bone cancer. The other one, she's a Christian, thank God. And I became a Christian. I don't want to say Christian, a follower of Christ, I should say, because that would seem to be tainted right now. I'm a follower of Christ, and I will to the day I die. Because he saved my life from everything, from everything. You know, it's 
It's not easy. It's the hardest thing I've ever done is to follow Christ. It's harder than being a drug addict. Being a drug addict is easy. You see them out there living underneath the bridge, laying on the side of the building. No, they got no responsibilities, no rent, no nothing. People come up, give them money, give them food. I mean, that's the easy life. But to actually become somebody, to follow and do things that are right, and then tell somebody about it, that's the hardest thing to do. But that's the right thing to do. And that's what we're supposed to do. That's why God made us. That book tells you that. That book tells you everything. You know, the scripture we're going to read about, it's going to tell you that. You know, what this book is. It's a book of life. And it's not just a life, it's a lifestyle. It's how you live your life. You know, you can't, once you become a believer in Christ, there's no going back. Because you don't want to go back. Because you're a new creation in God. And what a feeling, the joy that I have, I can't get no drug that feels like this. I mean, I, I might be choked up and everything right now. I, the way I feel, it's just amazing. The friends that I have, I have true friendship now. I have people that no matter what I'm going through, they are there for me. They're not just saying, okay, well here, maybe you need a little bit of this, or you know, and, you know. No, they're, not, they're true friends and family and love you, you know? And my relationship with my dad is the greatest thing ever. You know, I mean, he's like my best friend. No pun twist, but, <laughs> but, but I call him every Tuesday, Thursday. I have breakfast with him every Friday. He means everything to me. You know, I never had that. I, I, I can remember at one point in time, I told him I didn't want nothing to do with him. You know, but that was the dope. You know, I love that man. I love everything about him. You know, and my friends. Look at my biker friends out there. Yeah, they look a little different than everybody else, but <laughs> just the way we are. You know? And I'm thankful for that. You know, if it wasn't for meeting Tommy Smuggler, I wouldn't have met these guys. You know, he introduced me to the biker world to where I could go out and go to the places that nobody wants to go. That's where we go. You know why? Because we came from there. We came from the streets. We came from the dope. We came from the jails. We came from all that, that, pe that people don't want to, that they don't want to see. They're blind. They see their, their, little, their little groups, you know. That's all they want to see. The real world's out there, not here in the parking lot. It's out in the streets. It's not the bridge. It's in the jails. It's in the bars, you know, and that's where we go. You know why? Because God tells us to. And that's what we have to do. We chose this, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> being real, you know, but we enjoy it, you know. For one thing, look what he gives us a ride. Mm. I mean, come on. He gives us the tools to do our ministry. Mm. You know, we got beautiful bikes. We carry the word of God with us. You know, what more do we need? We've got the word. That's all we need. Amen. And if we can bring one soul from dying out in the streets, you know, I'm happy. Mm -hmm. Because we took the time to save somebody. Well, not us, but God did. Mm -hmm. We told him the path. Mm -hmm. Because there's only one way. Mm -hmm. There's only one way to God, and that's through Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, you can hear other you know, people that talk out there. There's through their so-called man's religions. Mm -hmm. There's only two types of people in this world. Those who are with God and those who are against Him. That's it. If no offense or buts, that's it. Two types. You know? But it's not about me. I just want to tell you what God did for me. He saved my life. And I know He can do it for anybody else out there. All you have to do is listen. Mm -hmm. And then once you listen, beg Him for it. Please. Because it will change your life. Now let's see if I can get my composure. Let's talk about the Lord. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I need glasses. I'm holding <laughs> Alright. I'm getting a picture of that. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Wait a minute. How's that? I've got readers here too. <laughs> 
Okay, if you have your Bibles, I hope you do. This is your lifeline, either in book form or nowadays I guess it's in tablets, cell phones. You better have the app because <laughs> it's your lifeline. Without it, well, you'll see. Okay, let's go to the book of Joshua. It's on page 3 also. Oh, no. okay. Joshua, chapter 1, verse 8. Let's take a look at this. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you observe to do according to all that is written in it, for when you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Huh. Let's ponder on this a second. This book of the law. Yes, it is the law. The Hebrews call it the Torah, which means law. God gave us his word, not our word, his word. He wrote this. Yes, he used human beings to do it, to pencil it out. But it's him. Because by reading this, that's how we can get our relationship to the Father. And that's how this works. Because if you're not reading this book day and night and getting it in here and in here, this will not work for you. Will not work. End of story. Will not work. You have to be in it day and night. Because if you don't, stuff starts trickling in. The world starts trickling in. The devil's crafty. You know, he knows how to get to you. I mean, look at the stuff out there. When you go by, say, a grocery store or something, right? What do they put right there by the aisles when you're checking out? Candy and little knickknacks and all that. Why? Because they know that it's eye candy. So is the world. It's got lights and flashing things. Well, the devil is a deceiver and a traitor and a liar. He's good at that. And he knows what gets us. So stick to the text. Let's take a look at this. Okay. So we do to all that's according to it that is written in it. Well, that's hard to do. I mean, if you look at the Ten Commandments, why were they given to you? They show you that you can't do it. That you do need God to save you. But if you read this day and day out and understand it and meditate on it, you know, Take some of the scriptures and, you know, try to understand them, read them. Because when you get in trouble, what saves you? Not the world, but God's word. You know, how many, how many of you get depressed or, you know, get angry? You know what? Take a breath. Recite some of God's word. You know what happens? It disappears. You know? People think, ah, that's not going to work. Really? It sure works for me. You know? I mean, because I, I'm not perfect. Yeah, I, I snap a lot because I just built up anger. I don't know. But, you know, I see things, and what happens? I'll start, when I'm dri mostly when I'm driving my truck, I start singing to the Lord. You know, thank you, Lord. Praise your name. Thank you. You know, and giving thanks to Him. Daily. Every single day I do this. You know? It's like my little closet. You know, it says to go in your closet and be one with the Lord. Well, my truck is my closet. You know? I don't care who can hear me. That's my time with the Lord. That's when I'll sit down and I'll do my prayers. You know, I pray for my friends and family and friends. And, you know? And that's when I sit and talk to the Lord. Ask Him to be with me through the day. Because if He's not, I'm going to screw it up. I will screw it up. Why? Because I'm flesh and bones, and it will happen. But if I ask him to help guide me, at least I got a fighting chance. I will have a fighting chance. So let's continue. Okay. You will be prosperous and then have good success. Well, this is not talking about being rich with all kinds of money. Living in a mansion, having everything you want. This is talking about your life, your soul. You will have everything. Life in Christ is everything. There is nothing else. You know, because what happens when this, this suitcase dies? It gets thrown in the ground. 
then what? Then the worms eat you. What good is that? No. But if you believe unto him, like it says in John 3, 16, you will be saved. All you have to do is believe. There's no magic trick. No magic words come out. You know, just believe. The people on the cross said, I believe. You know, I truly believe. You know, remember me. And what happens? He was in paradise. He will leave. You know, he will live. Because there's two places you're going to go. Either one is to be with the Lord. You know what the other one is, right? It's a little warm down there. <laughs> I don't want to be there. You know, there's a story about Lazarus about that. You know, the water, you don't want to go there. Hell's a real place. Don't let the devil fool you. It, it's real. Let's get back to the scripture. I'll get sidetracked a little bit. Okay. As we read this one here, Isaiah, verse 1, verse 8. Let's take a look at Psalms 1, 1 through 3, if you would. Turn there. Psalms, book 1, verses 1 through 3. Okay, here we go. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. Remember the law, the book, the word of God? And in his law, he meditates day and night. There it is again. See a pattern here? Get this word in your mind and in your heart. Get that relationship with the Lord. It'll save your life. Keep going. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season whose leaves also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. See, there it is again, prosper. You know, that's because the, when you've got the Lord with you, and he's guiding you, you think he's going to let you fall off a cliff because you, you're, you're going down the path of unrighteousness? No, there's always a way out, always. But you have to be mindful for it. If you're not in his word and not having a relationship with God, you're going to miss it. You know, there's a turn up there ahead. If you're not one with God, you're going to miss it at the fort. You're going to go this way when you're supposed to be over there. You know, get that map quest working, you know. Put it in your phone. Get it going. Stay tracked. You know, I'm telling you. I was a dead man out there. When I was in my addiction, there were only two places I was going to end up. In prison or dead. I'm not there. Because the grace of God saved me. Here it is. Remember the songs we were singing? Oh my gosh. Those are real. Do you believe? Amen. Better. You know, hey, this is real. You know, this isn't no joke. It's not. Let's look a little bit more with my glasses. Okay. All right, here it says here in the notes. This reveals the lifestyle of God's chosen people. As a believer in Christ, you're a chosen people. You're a chosen generation of God. As we believe in the Lord, he has chosen us. We're his children. You think he's going to let anything happen to you? <laughs> no. You think anybody can stop him? No. This is all made. This world is made for us. He made it for us. And you know what he said? That it was good. Enjoy it. Be fruitful. But he's not going to force you to have a relationship with him. But why wouldn't you? I mean, he's a loving father. Just like your parents are. You know? They love you no matter what. And if you have kids, don't you love your kids no matter what? It's the same thing. But in a bigger context. The Lord is our Father. He's our creator. 
And all he wants is to have a relationship with you. And it's one awesome thing to do. You know, I can't tell enough. And I can't praise him enough. You know, but this book of the law that we read is life. It will come to you and it will come to life. If you read it day and night, and like it says, meditate on it, it does come alive. Let's see if I get it more here. As we go back to Joshua 1.8, it says to practice daily. Okay. Well, when we first get up in the morning, what do you guys usually do? Get your phones out, check all your messages and everything? Mm -hmm. um, first thing you should do is get in the Word with God. That's how you start your day. If you don't start your day right in the Word of God, how do you know where you're going to end up? Those messages and all that, they can wait. You need to get that relationship first with God. Once you're right with Him, you're right with everything else. Start reading the Word. Practice it daily, you know. And then at night, before you go to bed, you know, thank Him for what He did for you. He put food on your plate, put a roof over your head, took care of your bills for you. That's not us. This is all His. He just allows us to use it. Because, you know, life is short. You know, we're only here for a split second. You know, it may seem like an eternity, but it's only for a split second. You know, let's try to do it the right way and be joyful. Like I said, I've got so much joy in me, it's unbelievable. You know, I'm thankful. You know, I just, I really am. I just, I want to share the love of God that God's got. But, there's also another side too. If you don't do what God says to do, you know what the other choice is? It's death. It's no, he's, he's not going to kill you. You're killing yourself. And don't blame him for it. That's on you. Me. You. Me. Same thing. I'm not perfect. You know, he just wants to love on you and give you everything. You know, we're not robots. You know, read his word. He will touch you. It will change your life. I'll guarantee it. I will guarantee it. And so does he. Just read it. You know? It's... I'm at a loss of words. I really am. You know, I'm just... I'm very thankful for what he has done. And I'm sure all of you out there have your own little story of what he's done for you. And as, as we believe on, with the Lord and trust in Him, I'll tell you this from experience. You need to tell your story. You need to. The Lord tells us that we need to proclaim Him. Let people know. Because, like when I was out there doing my dope, I didn't know. I had no clue. Unless somebody tells you, or you see it, or read it, how are you going to know? Because the Lord's not going to come up to you and go, Come here! No. Like he says, he knocks. You got to let him in? Okay. Accept it. It's a free gift. You know? And then get out there and just don't be a, a chair sitter. Because what good is that? It don't do you no good. You know, it's, it's a waste. It's like leaving milk in the refrigerator. If you don't drink it, what good is it? You know, it turns sour, right? Well, so believers, you have to be reading the Word. You have to tell people. We're commissioned to do that. He tells us to do that. Get out there and tell people. Either at work, at the grocery store, anywhere you are. In the elevator, you know, it doesn't matter where. You know, we wear it on, one thing about us, we wear it on our vest. You know, so if we do something wrong, guess what? People are going to see it. You know, and believe me, they do. And, and they bring it up to you and say, oh, I seen this biker had this patch on, you know what? Okay. But, you know, we, we need to be strong and stand for good, and, you know, and for the Lord. Look where this world's coming to. I hate to bring up politics and stuff, but this world is coming to an end. 
And if we don't stand up and do something for being right, it's just going to get worse. And it's going to happen whether you do something or not. But the more that people stand up and stand for what is right, we might have a chance to change this world. You know, God gave it to us. You know, it wasn't our fault that Adam and Eve gave it back to the devil. You know, but we're not done with it yet. We're still here. You're still breathing, right? Right? Okay. Well, you know, let's get out there and fight for the Lord. He fought for us. He sent his son to die for us. Could you imagine that? My little niece in there. You think if Chris could give, give her up? I asked him, he first had the Anna yeah. in his hands. Could you give up your daughter to, for this world? He couldn't keep it together. He couldn't do it. Could you imagine giving up your kid for the world? For the world? Because you love him so much? That's how God loves us. So I urge you, whether you believe me or believe what I say, try it. Pick up a Bible. Read it. And if you don't understand it, take a step further. God, help me understand this word. Show me. I take a step further. Show me where I will understand what you're saying because I'm slow to understand and I don't see things. I'm a little slow. And so I, I, want, I want to make sure that I'm doing things right. Like today. You know how many times my different scriptures changed on me? It wasn't until last night that this one came up. And then all the songs that Chris sang in them were right in line. And with me telling you about what the Lord did for me. So I urge you all, tell people. It doesn't take much. I mean, you'll see people, you know, in my work, I work for, a, it's funny, an outpatient drug program now. Yeah. How funny is that? <laughs> right? But... <laughs> I see people sitting there sometimes just losing it. You know, hey, what's the matter, you know? And I put Bibles out. In every building, I put the daily bread out. Man, they go. The first day, they're gone. It's like, wow. Well, I have to put more out. Well, now it's gone to the Gospel of John. Now it's even Bibles. People are hungry for the Word. They're hungry for hope. They, they're looking for a way out. But the problem is, nobody's telling them. You see the so-called other religions out there on the streets every single day with their little stuff telling them about the wrong way to go. Well, why aren't the Christians out there doing it? Amen. Pastor Chris is out there once a week at the prayer booth. My dad's out there and Tommy's out there with the prayer booth. We have prayer booths at our events and stuff. you got to be out there to tell people. have to be. That's what it's all about. So with this... If there's anybody here that does not have a relationship with the Lord and would like to, I implore you, talk to Chris, talk to me, talk to any of my brothers out there who's got a vest on. We would, we'll talk to you about it. You know, repent. Come to the Lord. It's everything. It's everything. Thank you.